Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. It's showtime in Carlton's country, and it's all down to this wealth fish around them between four people and two groups. When it comes to money, there's plenty of it going around. With an explosive first two rounds, each one of these four GMs has had the chances, and it all comes down to who plays the coolest game. How do you lose an otherwise one game? It's all part of this experience. These gems are having to come up with some incredible skills. Forget theory and forget opening preparations. As I said before, if you ever get the chance to castle, only then the games get to normalize. And by the way, did you know how many players don't know how to castle? Fisher Random has never been popular, but many people want this to change. Is this a matter of time? Only time will tell. Today, we're looking at another two rounds and four games are scheduled. Before I get going, watch out for that special that I'm working on. So if you like Halloween, I'm working on some great special effects and I managed to do things that I didn't think were possible. If you watch it, watch out for all those small details. Okay, this video is not out until the end of October. So let's stick to what we have today. It has to be either the game between Wesley and Napo or Magnus and Fabi. So what is it going to be? I'm probably going to cover both, but let's do this one at a time. Let's do the game between these two. A new random position, and this is what we have. The kings are pretty much in the middle. The pair bishops are perfectly positioned on crucial spots on the board. And like I said before, players get only a quarter of an hour to study and prepare for what you see. Wesley White, and this is game number three, goes for this move. Nepo's response, b6, trying to get his bishop to take control of the light squares on the diagonal. g4, f6, and immediately pay attention how these threats appear out of nowhere. With a2 coming under fire, Wesley developed his knight, when Mr. Bishop came out, here comes knight number two into the game. c5, wanting to scare this knight on b3. And there is no way Wesley can ignore it. And against all odds, Wesley does ignore the potential of this pawn on c5. This is what he did. Why? Because if you go after the knight, after knight d4, this threat on a2 is also nullified. So, for this very reason, the knight was not attacked, but Nepal got his first knight to enter the game in this manner. D3 supporting the center, bishop c7, bishop e2, and pay attention of how Nepal castles here. Can he? Yes, he can. And this is how it is being done, as if the knight is not on the edge of the board. Only joking, guys. This is not possible. Funny, funny enough, this is how you castle here. On this specific board I'm using, it is near impossible to mimic this move by black because conventional chess boards will not allow you to do this. Bishop e3, e6, and with every single move being played, the more normal the chess board becomes. And that was Wesley's turn to castle, so again, pay attention to how he does it and I only get to have one shot at this I will not be able to repeat this so this is how castles is done by white the king comes to c1 and the rook crosses over to d1 and this is what we're talking about now that both players castled with regular chess players in exactly who castles what side 
because not only they know each other and they know each other's game, but the very opening they choose to go for also plays a big part. So I guess that dictates around about 85 to 90 percent of what site one castles. Here, no chance. There is very little, if any, opening theory. No attack can really be initiated unless you have some intel on what site your opponent castles. Only now each player can start thinking of how to get his pieces to become more active. And here Nepo goes for it. D5 takes, takes. There is a reason for this. It was all about getting in this attack on the knight. And when the knight backed off, there came this pawn push, stopping d5 from making another move. And now it is Nepo who mounts the pressure, and this is what he does. A very simple yet very effective c4. Not only gaining space in the center, but also forcing Wesley to do something with his knight. Does he get him to return to the first, or is there anything better to play? Getting the knight to return to the first rank is pointless. Wesley went for this type of maneuver, and slowly, slowly, this knight will make himself felt elsewhere on the board. Rook e8, rook e1, and knight c6 got Wesley in with this response. Unless anyone makes a mistake, this is heading towards another draw. But it's way too early to assume anything concrete. So if Neville was planning this knight to land on b4 in order to wedge him into d3, it's no longer possible and we'll need to come up with something else. Nepo didn't worry about anything. He advanced his pawn and he knows he has a solid control of the center. Wesley's response, the position is tight. And if bishop f4 is not an option, what else has Wesley got? And yet Wesley seems to have found something. It was all about this night move. I have no idea what this knight is supposed to do, and I can't figure it out either. What is the knight doing on h5, guys? Whatever move this was, it got Nepo to react in a way, in a very funny way. Nepo being Nepo went for a completely insane type of response. He offered the bishop for the single pawn, and this is in my eyes equal to blunder. I think I need to sound this, unless I miss something. And if it's not a blunder, then I would figure something out. Why did Nepo hand over a perfectly and very healthy bishop? And you know, I'll take it all back. This is not a blunder, but a very well calculated move. When the bishop came off, how can I miss this one? See this bishop on e3? This is the reasoning behind this gesture. And with this bishop being toast, now you see him, now you don't. Knight back, we are used to trying to trap this rook. But as soon as Nepal realized, he got in with this very carefully selected move, and now his six is covered. In essence, Nepal earned himself a pawn and also has a nice looking rook that can always pull out or his brother on d8 can come to his rescue. Bishop f3, forcing Nepo to react, got the other rook to join in, and when these two rooks went, the queen came chasing after him. Nepo has many options, but to avoid any deep complications, he pulled the rook to safety. Queen g2, how no one is going to ask me to explain why, got Nepo to come in with this knight repositioning. And when Wesley activated his own rook, if you're looking for an explanation as to why knight e7 was played, I hope this explains a few things. Queen h2, bishop c6, and once Nepo allowed Wesley to penetrate into his own territory, this looks really ugly. Nepo had no choice but to capture. Once the rook came into e6, Nepo seems to be in trouble. Not only f6 is hanging, 
but this position is slightly deeper than just looking at this pawn. What you really need to worry about is whether, not whether, but what black does if queen d6. When Nepo removed f5, Wesley wastes no time whatsoever. He does get the queen to this very spot, and this might be the break Wesley's looking for. And just look at how one inaccuracy brings about disaster. Not queen f8, but this bishop move, and before, if bishop takes h2, was not a blunder, and it wasn't. This bishop move by Nepal was. When the knight came off, the rooks also departed, and this was like the very first game. Wesley's up by full minor piece. He found it impossible to win first time round, but is he able to improve today? When another pawn came off, Wesley delivered this check. When the king made his way to safety, d5 was removed. Now Wesley, at the same time, is attacking the queen. Queen g5, keeping the bishop somewhat hostage. But did this worry Wesley? It seems Wesley had it all planned out. When this check was delivered, king c7, in a repetition, when the king repeated two, it was all down to Wesley. Wesley switched tactics immediately. He went for this queen move. And he probably wants to pin the bishop. King e8, a very precautionary bishop responds by Wesley. And this just to be able to free up his queen. G3, and here Wesley starts with a new series of checks. King up the board, queen takes, and king back, led to this check. And after king e7 and queen b7, this bishop on d7 is not going anywhere. King back, a queen check, king fourth, and this new check. And Wesley's trying to figure out how to break through. How similar is this game to that of round one? King back. And now queen b6. But how is Wesley breaking through, guys? Well, there is no need for this because Nepo freed the towel and resigned. It's all about this spot on b7. And one Nepo can't really cover. Against any move, expect a bishop check. And when king b8, this bishop discovery will hurt big time. And this is the reason why Nepo resigned. There are plenty of more games to follow. It's Wesley's first win, but even a single win can often be enough to secure your place in the finals. Wesley knows there is a very long way to go, but a win is a win. And in the end, it was the result Wesley was looking for. Plenty of more to follow. So until next time, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.